Good evening. You're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. First, the headlines. Russia announces a temporary halt in fighting to allow Syrian rebels and residents to leave the besieged eastern parts of Aleppo. Iraqi security forces continue to battle the Daesh group in the city of Mosul. After he was appointed as Prime Minister, Al-Hariri looks forward to form a new government. Good evening once again and thank you for joining us live from the news center of the Sultanate of Oman Television. Here we present to you the details of this news bulletin. Russia announced a new pause of air strikes against militants in the Syrian city of Aleppo for 10 hours today. Ambulances and buses gathered on the crossing point of Al Bustan Al Qasr, waiting for people willing to leave eastern Aleppo, giving them a time window from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. local time. Syrian insurgents stepped up a week-long offensive on government-held areas in the city of Aleppo yesterday, detonating three car bombs and firing shells which killed at least a dozen civilians. Insurgents groups are seeking to break a government siege on rebel-held East Aleppo, which has been almost continuously in place since July. They want to seize government-held areas of Aleppo in order to link the cities east with rebel-held rural areas west of Aleppo. United Nations aid has been unable to reach the besieged area and the local medical infrastructure has been brought to its knees by a lack of supplies, a shortage of staff and air strikes on medical facilities. As the Iraqi security forces continue to battle the Daesh group in the city of Mosul, residents in the city's eastern Karama district say that they feel relieved that the militants have been pushed out because during their occupation of the area, they were treated harshly. Iraqi security forces have offered them food and water, which they have been missing for the past two years when their city was under the militants' control. Residents say that the food and water shortages were not the biggest problems. Many also lost their loved ones. While there is little damage from the fighting in Mosul so far, the militants' main defensive positions were in villages outside the city limits where the destruction is total. Whether the United Nations fear of a million refugees becomes a reality will depend on how quickly the Daesh can be defeated in their last stronghold in Iraq and how much of the city is left standing when that mission is complete. A car bomb attack by Kurdish militants in the southeastern Turkish city of Diyarbakir today killed eight people and wounded more than 100. Turkish Prime Minister Bin Ali Yeldrim said that one suspected member of the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party was also killed in the blast. The blast struck near the police station in Diyarbakir where some of the party leaders were being held in a terrorism probe. In Beirut, Lebanon's President Assad al-Hariri to form a new government yesterday after he won the support of a majority of members of parliament including the influential parliament speaker who said he would cooperate with efforts to set up the new cabinet. Hariri's nomination is part of a political deal that resulted in him endorsing one of his political opponents, uh, Christian leader Michel Aoun, as head of state parliament elected Aoun, an ally of the Hezbollah group, as president on Monday, ending a 29-year month vacuum in the post. Parliament Speaker Nabih Barri indicated he would cooperate in efforts to set up the new administration. Hezbollah's MPs did not nominate anyone for the post of Prime Minister, but the group is expected to take part in his cabinet. In Lebanon's sectarian power-sharing system, the post of Prime Minister is reserved for a Sunni Muslim. The President must be a Maronite Christian and the Parliament Speaker must be a Shiite Muslim. 
French police started evacuating thousands of migrants today from an illegal camp in northeastern Paris where numbers soared after the closure of the large jungle camp in the port city of the Calais last week. Police moved in at a daybreak and escorted migrants to dozens of buses from the sprawl of tents and mattresses where numbers living rough surged in recent days to as many as 3,000. The migrants, many from Afghanistan and Sudan, would be transferred to holding centers in and around the French capital pending the processing of asylum requests. The estimated total of around 3,000 at the Paris camp is about twice as many as just a week ago when the bigger camp in Calais was evacuated and demolished. The illegal Paris and Calais camps are home to close to 10,000 migrants in all who are being put in a smaller but less ramshackle lodgings have come to symbolize Europe's fraud endeavors to deal with the record influx of migrants from war zones in Asia, the Middle East and Africa. Still to come in our news bulletin. With the participation of a number of local Gulf and Arab theatre groups, activities of Rostak Arab Festival for Comedy Theatre started. Welcome back uh, to the news from the South and of Oman Television. The Paris Climate Agreement, which became officially affected today, is a historic agreement that has open, opened a new phase in the global climate uh, governance and its uh, implementation is a major step in coping with the global climate change. As a major step uh, in coping with the climate change, uh, China has established a nationwide carbon emissions trading market so as to fulfill its responsibility in global climate governance. At present, uh, we are are making a draft of some relevant law and regulations. We have organized the preparations of the guideline for verifying the reports on enterprises' carbon emissions in 24 sectors and organized enterprises to check their historical emission data and quota, said Xing Jing, Inspector of the Climate Change Department of the National Development and Reform Commission. The death toll from a speedboat accident in Indonesia has climbed to 54 after dozens of bodies were found floating in the ocean. A local police chief said that search teams today pulled another 36 corpses from the sea around Batam Island, south of Singapore, near where the boat struck a reef and sunk more than two days ago. The overcrowded speedboat was carrying three crew and 98 passengers, mostly Indonesian migrant workers from Malaysia, to Batam at the time of the accident. Authorities managed to save 41 passengers and had hoped to find more alive before making the grisly discovery. The activities of Paint for Peace competition were concluded in the governorate of Muscat. The competition is organized by the Omani Society for Fine Arts in cooperation with Bahavalaya, a global platform for art and culture in India. It coincides with the Sultanate celebrations of the 46th in its glorious National Day and its conclusion activities were presided over by His Excellency Sayyid Saud bin Hilal al Busaidi, Minister of State and Governor of Muscat. Around 50 artists from the Sultanate and India participated in the event. The artists works focused on the peace approach adopted by the Sultanate in its relations with the neighboring countries. It's worth mentioning that the event was a valuable opportunity to exchange experiences and skills between the Omani artist and the Indian artist. At the end, the participants were honored.
The cruise ships Ida Stella and MV Voyager visited Salala Port today in a short visit within the framework of its tour program to a number of ports around the world. The two ships' passengers toured the most important archaeological and historic landmarks in the governorate of the Far, besides visiting the beaches and the traditional markets. It should be noted that 1, 153 cruise ships anchored at Salala Port during the last five years years with 1034 with 134,020 tourists on board With the participation of a number of local Gulf and Arab theater groups, activities of Rostock Arab Festival for Comedy Theater started in Rostock College for Applied Sciences. The festival in its first round is considered a cultural phenomenon with the presence of a number of comedy theater stats in the Arab world. The opening ceremony included honoring a number of comedians from inside and outside the Sultanate. It as well included playing oud music and a play performed by the comedy theater group from Bahrain. The festival is considered the first of its kind in the Middle East and will help boosting the popularity of comedy theater performances in the Sultanate. And now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Clear skies will prevail over the most of the governorates with chances of low clouds over governorate of Musandam and North Al-Bathina. Low clouds and fog early morning and late at night are expected to the on the coastal areas of South Sharqiyah and Al-Wusta. Winds will be southwesterly light on the coastal areas of the Sea of Oman, while on the rest of the coasts it will be southeasterly light to moderate. The seas will be slight with a maximum wave height of one meter. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Russia announces a temporary halt in fighting to allow Syrian rebels and residents to leave the besieged eastern parts of Aleppo. Iraqi security forces continue to battle the Daesh group in the city of Mosul. After he was appointed as Prime Minister Al Hariri, looks forward to form a new government. With that, we come to an end of tonight's news bulletin. Live from the news center of the Sultanate of Oman Television, we have presented to you tonight's news bulletin. From the entire news team here in the studio and the newsroom, we thank you for joining us.